Maria Amelia Raquelme. Today, August 5th, 1847, is a great day at this house in Granada, Spain. A little girl is born. She cries. I saw Colonel Raquelme come in. I can hear the mother. Joaquin, just look at her. But it's a girl. She is your daughter. Little Maria Amelia quickly became the apple of her father's eye. He could not have imagined what she would mean for him and for the Raquelme family line. She's been with Joaquinillo for two years now, and she's not a bit jealous. Maria Emilia thinks only of taking care of her little brother. What a sweetheart this little girl is. It hurts me that the changes of fate have prevented my husband from spending time with his children. They have brought me to Pamplona with them. For the children, it's an adventure to live in a fortress. But it's an ill wind that blows. Sentinel, be alert. Alert, alert. I have to be alert too, Jesus, so that I don't let evil into my heart. Sometimes the children fight. <laughs> but Maria Emilia is always quick to calm the situation. Sadly, your wife is a victim of the cholera epidemic. Oh my god, what about the children? They should go to the countryside to be far from the danger of catching it. I saw them leaving, looking so sad. An orphan at age seven. I hear her talking to the Virgin Mary. She feels like more of a mother to her than ever. I don't know if she's dreaming or if it's just divine grace. Mary has shown her the baby Jesus. Jesus, I want to be only for you. And it wasn't a childless decision. It was for a lifetime. I will be happy and I will sing to you like this nightingale to praise you. I've been knocked all around in this cage. Perhaps in Tenerife, Wakanillo will get better. Emmy, when you talk to me about God the way you do, it gives me strength and makes me happy so I can accept my suffering. Here we are. Hello, Hello Maria, Maria Amelia. Amelia. I'll be right there and we can start catechism study. A housewife, a nurse, and now a catechist. Because she's seen so many poor children, alone, with no one to teach them and show them how to pray. Listen to what I'm telling you. I will never, ever give you permission to become a nun. You're all I have left. Do you want to kill me? Maria Amelia won't insist. She will take care of the house and her father, but they are often apart. He will have to go into exile in Lisbon after the fall of Isabella II. I can't wait to have you by my side. How precious you are. How I love you. Maria Amelia is in a hurry. In Madrid, her cousin is courting her. She wants to belong only to God. What a good writer you are, Father. I will keep your writings forever. I will be so sad to see them leave. They will move to Madrid. I will sing no more for Maria Amelia. Many young men are attracted to Maria Amelia's refinement and her friendliness, but these parties bore her. Don Joaquin told me she wants neither jewelry nor new clothing. She prefers to help the poor. She told her father, the poor are the image of Jesus. They are my friends. She's given away everything to the poor, and her explanation was surprising. I've put it in a bank that doesn't go bankrupt. Her cousin Eduardo and others are playing a losing game. She has such a delicate and caring touch as she moves among the helpless in hospitals, in attic rooms, and elsewhere. Maria Emilia is very sad. El Paseo de las Delicias in Seville has become the scene of a tragedy. Runaway horses caused an accident. She was unharmed. Don Joaquin died on February 22, 1885. Lord, what do you want of me? Now that I can become a nun, I can't find what I'm looking for in any congregation. Mr. 
Miss, the administrator is here. Oh, have him come in. I heard everything. Maria Amelia owns some land in Granada. She can build a chapel to Jesus there and live a simple life in the house. The house is so big for me that I'd like to give it to a community and keep two rooms for myself. But why, Maria Amelia? You've always wanted to promote a work devoted to the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And this is the moment to make it happen. Now I understand what God wants of me, and I'm going to devote myself to it, Monsignor. The congregation, focused on the Eucharist, will be devoted mainly to perpetual adoration, missions, and education of youth. Tomorrow, March 25th, 1896, is the big day of the founding of the Missionary Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament and Mary Immaculate. I sing with joy, and she hears me. You, Maria Emilia Riquelme, have devoted yourself to the Lord. All of you together, with humility, are beginning a new chapter in the Church. The Immaculate Virgin is with you all. So you see, we have the school up and running, and more missionary candidates will join it. We are nothing, but God is everything for us. Mother Amelia will also suffer many setbacks, and even slander, but this fledgling congregation will grow. The second foundation will be in Saria, Barcelona, and the third will be in Madrid. You are with me night and day, Lord, and you want me to be brave and not back down. I can feel that with love, suffering is divine. <laughs> that was a very good practice. We will be able to sing to Mary Immaculate at her celebration as she deserves. Not to mention when you are playing the harmonium. I have an idea. We will place one of these three canaries that sings so much next to the church. This one up here. I am eternally grateful to God, Sister Piera. Finally, on this second trip to Rome, the Pope has approved our congregation. Many years have gone by. Mother Amelia has outdone herself with small work. She was delighted to see missionary sisters leave for Brazil. She has suffered the agonies of the Civil War. Now, at the age of 93, she is all prayer, humility, and thanksgiving to God, to Mary Immaculate, and to her daughters. On December 10th, 1940, Maria Amelia Raquelme left this earth that saw her born to live eternally with God. Her daughters hear her final words. Into your hands, Jesus, I commend my spirit. So we move forward on this evangelical path laid out by Maria Emilia, caring for our world today. Love will teach you what you must practice. With Jesus, we want to be nourishment, strength, and consolation for our brothers and sisters, especially the weakest. The mission has no borders. Mary is with us, and this site is a meeting place with Jesus Eucharist.